Well, it has been proven that you can't really focus on one car at a time. So, you guys have been seeing the videos on the Pro Charge to TVS Cobra that's on that side of the garage. Go back over there. If you haven't seen it, here's a little sneak. And I'll put the link to this vehicle so far up here. Now what you have probably seen, if you haven't already, I'll put another little thing up here, is that we have the 94 Cobra radiator and intercooler in. Now this is Pro Charger's cast aluminum, I believe it's a dual core intercooler. Nothing's wrong with it really. It's kind of undersized for the power that we're trying to make, but we are running lower boost levels to get to those power levels. However, it just fits really weird. Never really liked it. In fact, I'll try to post a picture up here. I think I have one. I'll post it right now. But you can see the intercooler sits really crooked in the front grill. And that's because you're very limited with the opposite inlet outlet. So that one is as far up as we could get it. And it's pretty solid right now without having any pipes on it. But this one, I mean, just look how low it sits. The bumper really hangs about here and it should go straight across to the core support. There's no way that's gonna fit. So for many years we had this cocked where this only sat about an inch below. This four inches or five or six or whatever this is to get it down that low, there's no way that's gonna work. Now I've been talking about putting an intercooler on this car um, ever since I realized that you can't really get it straight or cut the bumper apart, which I don't wanna do that either. So I finally got one, so I'll show it to you guys. All right, so here's the intercooler that I got for it now. Little different, but most importantly, is having the inlet pipes both on the bottom and having the end tanks on the side. That's gonna allow us to tuck it up in between the bumper and get this low enough. And I could see that this was already on an SN95 car. Um, I could see that this is gonna go roughly to the core support. So that's gonna make mounting pretty easy. I'm gonna probably bend up these aluminum brackets to maybe twist off the top here and go to the top of this because it's got some locations to go there as well. So I'm gonna get this one Pro Charger off one real quick. We can do some comparisons on them, and then I'm gonna make some kind of rig to kind of hold it up into the car and uh, start getting this one mounted up. So just a quick comparison. Now this core is much tighter. This one's got bigger fins. They look to be wavy where this has two different sets. So the design is slightly different. This one's kind of dirty, we gotta clean it, but the size itself is about double. And the thickness is about an additional three quarters of an inch, maybe. Half inch thicker. So I'm gonna try to compare the weight. The bigger one is probably about 10 pounds heavier than the small one. So it is a little bit bigger, but for twice the amount of intercooler area, it'll be worth it. So I'm gonna try to get it rigged up and try to get this on here. All right, so I kind of got sidetracked with some stuff, so it's pretty late now, but I'm wrapping it up on the intercooler install on the 94. So I just wanna show you guys what I did really quick. I did just take a small detour and went and drove a GT500 2013. It's actually the first time I've ever driven one sick car just unbelievable car but anyway getting back to what I'm working on here so I'll I did take some pictures of what this looked like with the other one if you saw the last video you also saw that the intercooler was installed um, but I will try to put some comparative pictures here so we got the big intercooler on it now most importantly it's even with the core support I slid the bumper on, it looks to be like it's fine. It's super solid. 
I mean, it's not moving at all. So I got it pretty close to the radiator, but it's not touching. But it is not going anywhere. These are kind of ugly. I might clean them up and paint them after bending them up and making them work. You gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. But like I said, I mean, you can't move that thing at all. It's not going anywhere. Brackets underneath. Just made two of them. So now I want to work on getting the piping laid out. We had an idea of how we were going to do it with the Pro Charger, but the Pro Charger one also came out and down to here. So now i got to work a different way around this one. So other than that, should be good. Should make this side even easier. <coughs> so that's it for this car for now. Um, I didn't get a chance to sand the intake. I want to smooth this out a little bit more. So I'm going to work on that. Maybe over this weekend sometime. Maybe tomorrow. I'll bring you guys an update on that. Because once that's cleaned, then I'm going to go get this powder coated. And then we're pretty much done with the intake manifold. That can go on. The intercooler is now mounted, so I just got to worry about intercooler piping. And then wiring. I mean, there's, there's other things, but... I think once I get the intercooler piping on, figure out the intake situation, because the power pipe's going to come through the fender. Um, once I get that stuff figured out, then I can start putting the front end back on. And that's going to be huge. I can't wait to put the front end back on now. Especially with the intercooler on it like that. So it looks awesome. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much. <whistles> yeah, it's about 100 out. No, I think it's like 90. It's not too bad. What's up, guys? And thank you once again for tuning in. Now, it's been a little bit of, a little bit since I've been on the camera. I feel like it's been at least a couple weeks since I recorded, but it's probably been like five, six days. So you guys haven't seen any of these videos yet. I'm not sure which is going to come out first, but this is the Stahl Procharge TVS Cobra. Um, it's got quite a few parts missing still, so we're working on getting that together. It's kind of in the limbo stage now, but I have been working on the Cobra. Now, the last video you guys saw of the 94 Cobra was um, putting, porting the intake manifold, which I did a better job on. I touched it up after watching the video. It was a little rough. Uh, so I sanded that, got that a little bit better, and you saw the intercooler mounted, which I did not like how it turned out, so I got a different intercooler. I'm going to show you that right now. All right, so let's take a look. So I have the upper intake is just sitting on here. But we're getting pretty far, actually, since you guys seen it last. Now the headers are on. You guys saw that video. I finally got the bolts and washers to, and the gaskets to finish that up today. Uh, the radiator is in. You saw that in the last video briefly. It's mounted. It's solid. But this is the new intercooler. Much larger in size. It tucks behind the bumper. The bumper fits great. We've had it mocked up just roughly. It sits at the equivalent height of the core support, which is important. So that's going to be much better. We're starting to get the intercooler piping together. I have a $5 welder over here. I'm just going to tack it, and I'm going to bring it to my buddy to weld them all the way around. But I think I'm going to try to tack this all hard line here, and I'll have him finish welding it. On the other side, we're going to have to get it all done because I'm not having much luck with the current situation. So that's going to have to get either custom done by somebody or once again order some more piping and I'll tack it together and have somebody finish it because I can't weld yet. Yet. Once we get to the shop we're going to get a welder and we're going to YouTube that shit and we're going to be damn near proficient at it. Anyway, we're going to use the power pipe. I'm just going to sell that because to butcher that all up to make it work it's not even worth it. It hit the fuel line, it hits this, it hits everything in this area. So instead I'm going to run 3 inch in and I'll get a hard line adapter. As you can see that's not bolted down. So I do want to show you, so the fuel lines are all on. We started running the big stuff harness. We're just trying to make it a little bit cleaner, which we're going to focus on today after we get the headers and starter in. But uh, I just want to show you guys what the intake turned out like. So we went ahead and, and I did get a sanding bit to smooth everything out. So now it's it's much better than what it was. And I did it all the way down into the port. So it lines up pretty good. 
but it lines up pretty good. No gasket over lap. There's a couple corners that aren't matched perfectly, but it's, it's way better than what it looked like before, so that's all good. Intake's done. It's actually on. The cooling system is near complete. I am just missing these two hoses, which I know I have. I'm just missing the two coolant crossover hoses in the back, and I know I have those in the back of the notch. So, I gotta go get those off the car. But belt's all routed. We gotta mount the catch can today. We got inter uh, the factory radiator hoses fit fine. The rack's all in. Fuel lines are all on. I said that already. Injectors obviously are all plugged in. That's good. We're starting to run the harness. It's not timed yet. That's just in there. It does have oil in it, but it's missing a dipstick. I think that's it for now. So I'm going to work on getting the headers on. Got to get the starter in. And I'll bring you guys an update once we start working on some of the wiring to show you how we're doing that. And I'll see, depending on how poor my electric welding skills are, I'll show you what it looks like once I tack up the hard lines. All right, so a little more fabrication than we were intending on doing, but so far, Dan got the catch can mounted for the vacuum pump. He's making the line right now to connect those two. And then that's done. We gotta tighten them to the valve cover, you know this is still loose, but. So the vacuum pump draws vacuum on the crankcase, if you're not aware. So it'll, instead of just having a breather where it's, or a puke tank where the excessive crankcase pressure can pour into, this actually puts vacuum on the bottom end. It increases, in, increases ring seal, um, decreases windage. It actually has a significant power, uh, proven power gains as well. We saw about 30 horsepower when we strapped this on last year, or I should say last time. So that's all on there now. Now the cold side of the intercooler piping is going to have to be all made. Might use a combination of what we have, but we only need to make one piece over here and I have it and I have it just about set up for what I want to do. So this is going to go here. Like so. And this one's going to go here like so. Not the best gap, but it, it, it'll work. And then we'll use a, we'll still use a boot there. So then this one's gonna come up and over like that. And that's what fills the position. And voila. This will actually end up turning more. So I can get the blow off valve in the fender more. Like that. And then that'll still work. So uh, we're going to try to just tack this into place, see if that works, um, and we're going to have somebody else finish welding it because we haven't perfected our welding skills quite yet, and then that's pretty much good to go. So uh, last update will be for this video is going to be showing you guys this kind of fabbed up, how we're going to run this, and the catch cam being done, drive shaft is in it, we put the drive shaft in it already, uh, we got to put a dipstick in it. And then we're pretty much done for the day. We're gonna start wiring and stuff, and, but we gotta do some stuff over at the shop. So, and we'll, that'll be a separate video we'll bring to you guys. But, see you guys shortly. Killing it! Getting shit done. So we got the catch can in. There's a little kink there, but that's a pressure line, so I'm not really worried about it. You probably can't even see it on camera, that's how little it is. But we got that. Now we have the boot off the intercoolers tight or I'm sorry off the blowers tight that's good to go leading down to this one which is tight here and what we did is we took two pieces the blow off valve was already on this piece so what we did was we cut it these two made them up see some of my shitty tack welds with this five dollar welder um, new one coming soon that we'll actually learn how to weld on but anyway so that's there into there, everything works. So now we're gonna hit up our buddy, Curtis Mayday Midday. Get that welded in all the way. But blower side's done. We got the starter in. Can't really see in there, but can't really see, but the headers have a perfect spot to sneak the starter in there. Got the starter wired up, block ground done. But yeah, we're just about done working on the 94 for the day. 
Uh, so we got everything good. I showed you guys the porting. We cleaned that up good. Intercooler got swapped out since the last episode. And now we're starting to wrap, wrap up a lot of odds and ends. We are 50% done with our list. So we still gotta get these coolant crossover hoses off the notch. We gotta figure out where to mount the MSD box. Intercooler piping's only halfway done. And we gotta throw the dipstick in it. The MSD box and two-step module are gonna go in here somewhere. Just gotta figure out the nicest way to do it. Probably put the coil down low here. We're also in the same area. I want all the ignition stuff to be in this corner. And the fuse box will be behind that fender well, tucked away, so you don't really see any wiring, uh, except for the big stuff harness, which is kind of hard to hide because everything's extremely long. But we'll manage. Thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe down below. We're reaching 200 subscribers. We're getting really, really close. I want to hit that 200 mark. Uh, before the end of this month, which I think is very very doable. So let's work on that and I will see you guys next time uh, By the way the shop it's coming together. We got a lift coming We're gonna move the toolbox there this coming week. So that's coming along as well We'll bring you some updates on that because we're gonna go there later tonight and do some cool shit So I'll bring a video on that as well. So thank you guys once again for watching. I love you guys so much and we'll see you guys soon